everyone to the uh, November 2, 2017 meeting of the uh, Scarborough Ordinance Committee. Uh, I'm uh, Bill Donovan, and with me making up the Ordinance Committee is Kate St. Clair and Will Rowan, uh, all in attendance here today. Uh, item three on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of September 28, 2017. So moved. Second. Any comments or corrections? Huh? All in favor? Fourth item on the agenda, discussion and action on uh, public parking lot passes. And I'll ask uh, Todd Souza to uh, address us. Given the uh, lack of time, I think what Todd and I spoke about was for us to be able to get our questions answered, work with Todd to, to, on the schedule uh, of uh, increases so that we can move whatever we're going to move forward to the town council okay. and leave the more uh, complicated issue of uh, what sort of system he will be recommending and ordering for the Higgins Beach public parking lot to another day. Sounds good. Good. So Great. So as I passed along last session and sent along um, kind of comparisons of what we charge for the communities that you've already reviewed, um, I sent along suggestions of the fee schedule that had been proposed. Uh, if you notice at the bottom of the notes, um, uh, particularly in the season past non-resident, we are charging 75. We had talked about going to 100. And one of the brief conversations last meeting was, do we go to 150? It would put us right in the middle of what our, some of our competitive beaches are. Um, my only personal feeling, and, and, and it's your call to do either way, if you go to that 150, which I'm not saying not to, then I would then consider raising our daily parking fee to $15 rather than the existing 10, because once mm -hmm. you start separating that too far, people will start weighing whether they choose a season's pass, because now I've got to go 11 times to make mm -hmm. it value versus um, having right. it 15, so to keep that same right. ratio. So mm -hmm. either way, is, is I can see merit in both ways, but that's the only thing I would say is keep those two together and then that allows us to work into the gate system, parking ticket meter, whatever system we choose, we can go off of those decisions that you make. And the, fi and the $15, Todd, uh, uh, that may not have much of a life to it if you decide to implement a program of an hourly charge with a gated park and pay style system. Correct. Either way, we can work off that number as far as what it is, but at least it allows, as we move forward here, um, if we start selling the season's passes, it gives us a starting point for the office to start selling those, and we can work, we can work our way backwards off of that if we decide to go hourly versus that flat fee. And just for the record, that's a daily parking fee for residents and non, but this schedule is to keep our resident fees, as far as the season's passes, the same. So there's no impact to residents. It's just making our non-resident fees uh, in line with other communities. Do you know how long the um, $10 fee has been in effect? Uh, honestly, I do not. Um, any idea? It's, it's, been quite, it's been quite a while, Chief, right? Tracy, any idea how long the $10 fee has been in effect? I mean, I'm, I, would, I would say Eight? at least 10 years. I don't have an exact date, but it's, uh, it's been quite some time. Mm. It's been long enough that nobody brought up the last time we changed it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, uh -huh. I would say down at Higgins Beach, going by it every single day for the last 10 years. It's been $10. Yeah. It's never changed. Mm -mm. Uh, so, and I can see your point about uh, that uh, a $15 charge uh, because people would start to make those judgments that they're going to uh, pass on the... On the pass. On the, on the and, parking. And, and it does a couple things. Pass. It keeps less cash in the, in the booths for our ticket folks because then the more people have in seasons pass so there's not as have to keep that much money in stock on a daily basis in there so it provides a lot of positives for us as a staff okay good any other questions of Todd? Mm -mm. Uh so what we have is we have a schedule in front of us uh, that uh, Todd has put forward and uh, we had previously talked about a 150 number uh, and now Todd's suggesting that uh, that we combine that with a $15 daily charge. What are your thoughts? I, I was totally, I was completely for the going to the 150 until he said the $15 a day charge and then 
I kind of I can I can see some major flags for that. How does the fifteen dollar a day charge fit in with the uh, daily parking charge at other beaches? Uh, a lot of the other beaches are private. Most of the other ones are around twenty, and when you get into the high season, it can be higher. Um, most of the other communities don't have municipal lots. They have, excuse me, uh, day pass lots. Most of theirs are season passes. So a lot of it's private. Uh, Wells charges twenty. Most of OOB is private, re unless you're going to their their pass lots. Um, what is the uh, Old Orchard Beach's uh, uh, private lots charge? It depends on the day. When I've talked to their their um, their police force down there, it, it, they can choose if it's Fourth of July. It might be thirty dollars for the day. Yeah. If it's yeah. September, it might be ten. It might be you know. So they have the flexibility to flex their rates. I, I think, I'm nine minutes. I think I'm okay with it because I'm not sure it's going to have any legs. I'm not sure it's going to be around too long if we start to implement a uh, gated system. Well, the, just to, not to carry this conversation on further than it needs to be. Uh, with the gated, there's a lot of choices to go with that. When you talk about hourly. Right. Um, we're only talking about Higgins Beach, and so we really need to set a system that carries the beaches across. And when you start talking about hourly rates of three dollars, four dollars, you're talking about uh, a lot of ones, a lot of change, a lot of running around for staff. Um, so all those factors add up to recovery costs that we have to consider when we're looking at it. So, in looking at the gate system, you know, we really get four choices, and those are all going to come back down to cost recovery. And really, what's our underlying issue? Is it to not let people in? Is it cost recovery? Is it to make revenue? So those choices are there. And, and personally, I'm still not sold on an hourly rate based on what I'm seeing from other places. Um, but that's why we need a little more time to analyze it to see what's our return on investment and does that meet our long-term goal. And we really haven't said what that long-term goal is. Is it to recoup our funds between you know, 5.30 and 9 to make equity for all the people using the beach? Um, I think if we drive people towards the season pass, that has a little more equity in it. Um, plus recovery costs of well, greater law enforcement to check meters and tickets, um, and then more maintenance costs. So we got to kind of weigh all those things to figure out what that looks like. The uh, mm -hmm. season parking pass for residents yep. is? It stay, it would, I, I'm proposing staying the same at, um, excuse me, uh, $40. So at $15, you would, you would be ahead of the game with three visits yeah. to the beach. Correct. Yeah. And again, it's a greater value because one of the challenges we have for folks with our beaches is we're also not looking at how do we recover our costs um, that we add to, but also how to make it a better value and easier for the resident to go to the beach. Right. And a lot of the things we consider yeah, are, are yeah. fee recovery, but it's yeah. in benefit of the non-resident where a resident shows up at 10 o'clock and the beach is full. So how do, we, how do we give a value to them and protect their ability to go to the beaches too? Right. Uh, I'm fine with that. I'm. Do I'm, I'm want to have a motion, or are you? And, and the motion is to increase the daily pass from 10:15 the and the um, and the Out seasonal town. pass at non-resident seasonal pass from 75 to 150. Uh, uh, and otherwise, the schedule that's been presented by uh, Mr. Souza would be what we advance to the town council. Gotcha. There's still some question marks on the um, what was presented to us. Do we, do we need to fill those in? So we still have um, hourly fee has question marks, weekly parking fee, monthly parking fee, I think there's an RV, daily so parking for RV. So those were, not to cut you off, but those were put in there. Those were other options right. that that other communities had done in the past, and we those were brought them. forward based on um, when someone asked about those. And, and again, it weighs whether we're going to go hourly or go with a meter. So I think right now, um, don't offer it. I, we just stay where we are. I think the proposal is already gone in front of council about having the dollar rate, yeah. the meters. Let's get our feet underneath us, and then we can go back and look at those based on the system we put in place versus complicated any further. And um, yeah. take a motion. Yeah, someone. Second. Any further discussion? No, just no. thank you for all the sure. for all your well, work you did. My pleasure. All in favor. Unanimous. Great. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda. Uh, is uh, uh, we'll we'll put the uh, uh, discussion of uh, horses on the beach permits to the last item, and we'll have 
a discussion and action on parking restrictions on Gorham Road near the Nutsuch Brewery, and I'd ask uh, the Chief, Robbie Moulton, if he would uh, initiate the discussion by giving us context uh, to where this came to, how it got before the ordinance committee. Thanks, Robbie. Sure. Um, as you know, we've had a new business uh, move in on, on uh, Gorham Road. And um, prior to the business uh, being there, we've never really had uh, many vehicles uh, parking on the side of uh, Gorham Road in that area. And um, after the business opened up, and, and uh, fortunately, it's been very successful. They've, uh, they've had doing a great business. And um, in the beginning, there were uh, vehicles lining both sides of the road on, uh, on many evenings. Mm -hmm. And um, we kind of uh, put ourselves in a, a little bit of a holding pattern there to see if this was just going to be something from a brand new venture and it was going to uh, settle down and, and die off a bit. And it hasn't, um, fortunately, for, for the folks that own the business. But um, what has happened is that we've started to receive complaints from neighbors and, and uh, general uh, folks, motorists and uh, people around town. So um, I asked uh, Sergeant O'Malley. Sergeant O'Malley is in charge of our special enforcement unit, which he will describe to you as uh, when somebody needs to look at something, he's somebody. So I asked him to go take a look. Uh, there were some issues that were brought up, not just about the parking there, but also about speed issues on the road. Um, we did do some surveying and so forth, and uh, Sergeant O'Malley took a look at it and then came back and, uh, and had a discussion with myself and, and uh, the Public Works Director, and we looked at a number of issues. Uh, we looked at the, the sight line in that area. We uh, talked about uh, the difficulty w it, the way the road is, you kind of come up around a corner f fairly quickly, and um, and even traveling at the 35 mile an hour speed limit, it seems fairly quick. And mm -hmm. you come up around the corner, and when there are cars parked there, there were concerns about uh, car doors opening or people crossing, particularly at night. Um, and so uh, and so we had that discussion, and then what really. Um, was kind of the icing on the cake was the the winter plow operations because we're we talked a lot about what's going to happen when we have to plow and uh, and those vehicles are there so um, I sent a memo to uh, to Mr. Hall and here we are and I have Sergeant O'Malley here to talk about the specifics of, of what we did up there or what we looked at and he'll be happy to describe that thank you chief Good evening. Uh, as, the, as the chief explained, uh, we did uh, review this pretty thoroughly, I think, after a conversation with several of the residents. Uh, we have received a lot of complaints, and a lot of uh, complaints have been taken care of. Some of it had to do with the valet parking and the way that they were running the business, uh, the valet issue, and that has been resolved, thankfully. Um, but we do still remain with the parking issue down there. Um, we did a four-day uh, speed survey, or just under four days actually, and surveyed 47,000 cars passing that location. Uh, during that time, we noticed that the 85th percentile is where we set, generally set a speed limit at, uh, within five to six miles per hour of the 85th percentile, which happened to be 41 miles per hour through that area. Noting that a significant portion over that 85 percentile was quite high, uh, which is an indication that we need to do some enforcement down there as well. Um, the line of sight is the first issue I uh, came leaving the parking lot looking to your immediate left back up towards Oak Hill. We have a very low line of sight with no vehicles there at all due to the hill. Uh, it's probably about 300 feet. It does meet standard, but it's right on the edge. Uh, add cars to that, it pushes us out into the roadway before they can make a safe turn in that direction. Uh, that was my number one concern for exiting uh, customers from their facility. Uh, try to cross over the roadway to opposite side of the road for, for pedestrian traffic in that area in the evening when they're primary uh, business and when they're the, at the peak, the lighting in the area is poor. Uh, the traffic is heavy, uh, as you can imagine, from the 47,000 cars. Uh, so that remains a concern. Um, Neighbor complaints as well have had a lot to do with this. Uh, some of it we wondered if it was dangerous or different. Uh, and we found that, that in comparison to a lot of the areas, it is just dangerous uh, for us to uh, have vehicles parked on that road. 
uh, in that time. And as the chief mentioned, there really is no other parking on Gorham Road in that section of Gorham Road. Nobody utilizes on-street parking. Uh, so it is, it is a drastic change in uh, the daily commute for people. Uh, what really pushed it over the edge for me was speaking with Mike Shaw, uh, winter operations. Uh, that is a, what they call a high-speed plow right, uh, route. Uh, they need to keep moving through there. The commuter traffic is moving. They can't just creep along. Uh, and with that comes a lot of snow coming off the blade. Uh, as it is, we have a lot of crashes in that particular area because of the camber of the roadway. Uh, and so with the plow operations coming through there, we have uh, damage for pedestrian strikes with plows. We have damage for vehicles being struck by plow and the debris coming off the plows. And most importantly, we have no place to put the snow uh, to keep that high-speed operation going through there uh, should there be a storm that crops up and we don't get the parking ban out or it's just one of the small storms, remains no place to put the snow. Uh, so I think that with all those things combined in the review of it, it would be uh, to the benefit of and the safety of the citizens if we could uh, make that a no parking area. Questions for Sergeant O'Malley or Chief Moulton? Uh, when we have a parking ban in Scarborough, no one's allowed to park on the streets anyway, right? That is correct. I was just thinking if it's a problem, part of the issue is snow removal. Our, our problem lies with that, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, our problem lies do. with that is that in that initial phase, mm -hmm. uh, it, when we have the smaller storms that don't rise to the level of a parking ban, that area still needs to be plowed and it is a, it is a very dangerous area in a storm to begin with. Okay. Uh, so it's the parking ban would be our best scenario. Right. It would solve that problem, but very infrequent that we, that we call that. I, I, I went back and looked at um, some of them up our on our tapes when we were discussing this in the beginning and there were two specific counselors, um, Councillor Piazza being one of them, who brought up the fact a concern about traffic and we were reassured by the planning board that you know this wasn't going to be an issue. So I guess I'm a little bit concerned that you know we're coming back after the fact and now we're going to have to impose some restrictions on a business that weren't there originally. That always makes me uncomfortable. Um, on the flip side of that, I mean, I started hearing complaints two days after it opened. Um, and like you, was hoping that, hoping but not hoping, so obviously we want them to succeed and, su and succeed well, um, that, we, that the traffic issue would sort of, you know, peter itself out, but it hasn't. So clearly something has to be done. Um, what that is, though, I want to... I don't want to do anything that harms the business, but I also want to protect the residents and also, you know, our, our EMS and fire and safety, so. Questions, Will? I don't have a question. Thank you, Sergeant. Uh, public, uh, anyone wishing to address us on this issue, uh, please feel free to do so. Hi, uh, my name is Tai Ambo. Uh, I live on uh, 205 Golden Road, which is adjacent to uh, the restaurant. And uh, I'm here just to, uh, of course, you know, uh, I have concern about the parking uh, in that area, especially when customers uh, decided to not um, use a valet parking that the business offer and de decided to park their cars on their own on the street. And uh, a few times um, uh, when um, there's no valet parking on certain nights, that's how I found out that um, the customer just parked on the on the road and uh, parked so close to my the edge of my driveway, and and they the car blocked <coughs> my view. So whenever when I drive out my driveway, the oncoming uh, traffic coming from Route One towards uh, Mersey Road. Um, I cannot see the cars coming or uh, they can see me coming out. So that's very concerned to me because of my safety on, for me and my, my family that live there. So even though I have to be fair that the, um, Mr. Tim Morton uh, ha has been very um, gracious uh, and worked with me when I uh, put in request that you know um, his body parking guys can put something like just to have the cars not 
to park so close to my driveway, and they did so by put a, uh, putting some uh, green um, cones uh, near my driveway, so which is good. But then some nights that when there was no uh, valet parking uh, service, and that's when customers uh, decided to park so close to my driveway. So that's when I took my own action, put on, uh, um, I put an uh, orange cone. Uh, cone uh, Where is thing. your house in relationship to the restaurant? Um, to, um, on the when you look at the restaurant, my house is on the left of the restaurant. Okay, so it's the very next house as you head right, right towards Muzzy Road. Yeah, yeah, my driveway okay. is right next to the side of the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Have you ever needed on-street parking? I mean, have you ever had your your parking lot your driveway be full and you would need to park on the street? Never. Um, it, well, whenever I had party, of course, uh, you know, um, I like to uh, you know host uh, my friends. So I, I don't really park my cars and make sure my guests park on uh, on my lawn or on my driveway. And my 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 lawn and my driveway can hold 20 cars if they park so close together. Mm -hmm. So I make sure that I don't want to park. Plus, you know, that area is so um, so dark at night, and I don't want my friends to park their cars on the street. So I always uh, make sure that they park in the uh, driveway. Yeah. So I'm here just 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 to wish that um, there would be some permanent uh, solution to this, and whatever it is, if, you know, if you could, you know, uh, take into consideration that you know I don't want to be blocked with cars, so that way uh, I can be uh, safely uh, turn in and out of my driveway. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other? Uh, any uh, anyone else who would like to speak to the issue? Uh, Larry Hartwell, 9 Puritan Drive. Um, it's unfortunate that this has come up. Uh, you know, you have a successful business. They, they spent a lot of money to, uh, to develop that property. Uh, I, I also look at the garage barbecue, and what do the two places have in common? A lack of parking. Uh, I don't know that it falls on the council, but the, you know, I kind of question the planning board having allowed the, both of those businesses to go forward because just as a lay person, mm -hmm. you look at both of those those areas and there's just no room and there's no possibility for a plan B to expand it. So um, sorry for the owners to, to be in that position today, but certainly I agree that with the, the, uh, the police assessment, it is, uh, it is a dangerous area there. The, the sight lines are very short. Uh, it's a busy road, and uh, it's it's not a safe situation. Thank you. Anyone else? My name is Tim Boardman. I'm one of the owners at Nunsuch River Brewing, and um, we do recognize that there is a parking issue and was wondering if there was some sort of instead of posting the road outright, some sort of compromise where we could do seasonal. We understand there's no, there's not going to be any parking there once the snow flies. The snow banks won't allow it. And we understand the need to get plows through there. Um, but perhaps you mentioned enforcement. We know people go way too fast down that road. Um, maybe even look at lowering the speed limit to 30 miles an hour. Um, but uh, losing all those spaces between really five and eight on a Friday and Saturday is the only time that's being used. Um, or at least maybe we could put signs from your house to the corner, you know, to allow in front of our property, give them a little bit of setback uh, from his driveway. Um, you know, that would be helpful certainly for us, but we also want to make sure, you know, we don't create an unsafe condition for the town. If there was maybe some sort of way we could come up with a compromise. I guess you have, do you have any questions? Thanks, thanks, Tim. Questions of Tim? So I guess what I mean, what other alternative do you have other than on-street parking? And when that well, builds up? currently right now we're leasing a lot down the street. Um, so during those busy hours, we have all our employees off-site, um, and we were valeting into that spot, but that did not prove efficient. That kind of created a more chaotic situation with vehicles mm -hmm. coming and going from the lot. So we decided to stop that. And it's been a lot better since we made that change. Um, so we have about 30 spots off-site for mostly our employees. So we're utilizing, we're, we're taking lots of steps to try to minimize this as much as possible. 
And, and a compromise, as you would see, it would be right in front of your property to, to still allow parking seasonally only. Yeah, I mean, as long as people stay well off the white lines. And, I, you know, I realize further down the street, sight lines are obviously different. The shoulders are wider, but the church parks, you know, probably 40 cars on either side of Gorham Road just further down. Um, the Rock Church? Yeah. Yes. Um, so maybe just do seasonally, you know, from Thanksgiving to, I don't know, Memorial Day, late, you know, the end of April, whenever the snow banks are gone, something like that, like they do at beaches. Hmm. Yeah, we definitely have a precedent for seasonal parking. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, uh, Jay, do you have anything to weigh in on this? Anything prepared to weigh in on this, or um, Angela, or anybody? So I guess the only thing I would sort of speak to is in terms of the planning board review process at this point. Um, I did actually go back and because I, I sort of remembered the conversation, but it was about a year ago. And parking was really the key issue that our planning board struggled with. The site meets the minimum standards. Um, and so the planning board probably spent at least three meetings really focused on parking. And frankly, I, I was just reading my final memo to the board when they went in to make their final decision, and basically I laid out for them that based on their discussions that though the applicant is meeting the minimum standards, the ordinance does provide the board sort of flexibility, you know, if, they're, if they feel that, you know, there needs to be more, they can do that. Ultimately, the board felt, well, they've met the minimum standards, and so um, they were approved. Um, restaurants are probably the trickiest parking scenario that the planning board deals with. Um, you know, I, I'm sure you, you all sort of will recognize that some restaurants are overflowing and other restaurants have lots of ample spaces. So it, it's very difficult for the board to determine who's going to be successful and not, you know, hopefully everyone's successful. So um, all I can really say at this point is they did meet the town's minimum standards and the board ultimately um, unanimously agreed that that was um, that they that was how they could move forward, but it was an issue that um, they were concerned with. And unfortunately, the site is very tight. They have a, a tributary stream that they're not hard against, but they're hard against sort of the buffer to that tributary stream uh, behind the existing parking lot, um, and that flows into the none such. And so, certainly, preserving that buffer is a critical piece to uh, everything else the town's trying to do. So, um, I guess that's. Okay. what I have to offer um, on that issue. Thank you, Jay. Can I ask one more question? Uh, certainly. Um, Sergeant O'Malley, can I ask you one more question? Um, ideally, what would you like to see? I'd love to see them be able to park anywhere they want. Right. Uh, <laughs> well, me too. <laughs> uh, the, the problem I see is I, I recognize the request for, for the seasonal mm -hmm. issue, uh, which is doesn't solve what my problem was, was the line of sight. Right. Uh, looking left out of their parking lot, exiting onto 114 is the worst view. And that is exactly where we would be parking. Right. Um, okay. that is looking left out of the parking lot? Yep, looking okay. up towards Oak Hill. Okay. Uh, that That's is the same view that this gentleman in the back has. Uh, it, yes, actually he does, just yeah. a little bit further down. And so they even have it worse uh, coming out of their parking lot. Right is plenty of line of sight. Um, but if we if we allowed any parking right in front of their property, that's where we, we that's the main okay. focus of the, mm -hmm. of the issue. Uh, are there residences uh, uh, east uh, uh, where in the direction of the line of sight difficulty heading back towards Oak Hill? Towards Oak Hill, yeah. yes. Yeah. There are. Uh, mm -hmm. There's there's two more residences right there. Yeah. And and you mentioned neighborhood complaints, are we talking one or many? I would say that we've heard from uh, the neighbors uh, repeatedly. Uh -huh. uh, there's four in that immediate area that have been affected and I think we've heard from all four at one time or another for one reason or another. I've actually gotten calls from people mm -hmm. that are just going through the area. Yes, those two. That, and it was actually one of them was a call from someone that works with the police force that was like, wow, we got to do something because somebody's going to get hit here. So that's when it became concerning for me. Is the primary concern the line of sight or would it be pedestrians crossing? Because if you go 
further away from um, the restaurant on Gorham Road, further away from Oak Hill, there's, there are no houses there. Um, and on the other side, of, if the parking were on the other side of the street, it wouldn't be impacting individuals' line of sight. You're correct. It would not be a line of sight issue. We have pedestrians crossing the road, which is inherently dangerous, and you, you do it at your, at your peril. Okay. Um, and it is poorly illuminated down there on top of that. Yeah, it had a similar uh, death, didn't you, uh, mm -hmm. by you, the Sojin? Just up the street from the sh at the Shogun, back when it was the Shogun, uh, yeah. the patron leaving, crossing the road, was struck and yeah. killed. Uh, okay. I, for, for me personally, I, I think that this is clearly, in my opinion, too complex of an issue today for us to come to any sort of real plan. It would be my, my what I'd like to see is it go, it needs to, I, I think it needs to go back to the planning board or somebody needs to look further into this and work with the owners and, and then come back to us or whoever's in, sitting here um, with a plan because I'm not sure that we have enough information. I would be, hate to make a decision today that would negatively impact either the neighbors or the business just because I feel the pressure to have to get something out. Yeah, I think my only concern is the problem continues and the snow is coming. Yeah. Um, I think what I, I we have um, first reading, public hearing, second reading. So nothing happens super fast in this setting. True. And I agree with you that we ought to try to investigate all possible solutions, mm -hmm. but I think that analysis falls to us with the input of the police department, yep. the planning department, uh, uh, and consultation with our other fellow counselors. So I don't think by passing it along to the town council at this point uh, is anything more than a fair balancing of let's look for a solution that yep. is as fair as we can make it sure. for both the re new restaurant operators and the neighborhood and all the people who are going to be at risk yeah. and the public and, and leave it that it's well over a month's process before we'd ever get to the end point and we can modify whatever we do mm -hmm. during that period of time. So I, I think the other thing option that we have is something temporary mm -hmm. that, that would cover us this winter mm -hmm. and give us time to, um, to come up with a solution, a long term solution. Chief. Yeah, um, I'd just like to offer that we do have the ability to invoke a temporary solution. Let, let's say that um, we need to do some more investigation or it needs to go back to the planning board or we need to meet and try to find a common solution. Um, should we get into that point where, you know, we're, we're facing snowfall, we do have the ability to invoke emergency no parking with right. sandwich boards so that we could deal with a temporary situation, let's say, um, even if it was a minor storm or something. So I, I don't want people to feel like it, you know, we need to necessarily uh, rush this thing along. Um, and, and we certainly would be willing to sit with neighbors and folks from the planning board um, and the, the folks from the restaurant and see if there's some other way that we can deal with this, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I, I think it does make some That's sense nice. that perhaps what we should be doing is we will have a ordinance committee meeting uh, and normally the third or fourth week of November. Mm -hmm. Well, we, no, did, we did it. So the only reason we had it in the first week of the month was because we were trying to we, pu we pushed it to the fourth week so that we could add a, an additional meeting just to get our work done for the year. And we will have a transition, which is problematic. Uh, but I would like to be able to either bring it back to the town council with a compromise solution or to the ordinance committee. Now, I'd be fine advancing this to the town council with the same idea of uh, if, if we can't we can't come up with something that really works, then we have the ability to fall back on what Chief Moulton just said, which was 
emergency action in the event of, but some, there's enough line of sight issues, pedestrian safety issues, neighborhood issues here that it isn't just the snow issue. No, I don't think it is just the snow issue. There are other issues that we need to deal with, but I think, um, you know, I don't, want it, I don't want people to feel like we need to rush it along because of the snow, because we can deal with that mm -hmm. as, as an, in an emergency situation or as a temporary situation right. if we need to. Okay. Councilor Caso. So um, I, I, I certainly don't want to uh, interject anything in the regular operations of the Ordinance Committee, but as I sit here and watch you guys discuss this, um, a possibility may be uh, we've already started to look at this in transportation mm. um, and not just to this specific issue, but looking at it across the town with major thoroughfares. So a suggestion may be to um, follow Chief Moulton's advice to put a temporary solution in as necessary, but maybe put this back on transportation uh, because we do have a little bit more access to planning and line of sight and, and, and staff to be able to come up with maybe a more systemic type of solution versus a specific one to this. It, so just another option that you guys have, um, something to consider as a fallback fact gathering type of approach. So thank, thank you. Tim, did you say that uh, the greatest need for the uh, on-street parking is Saturday night? Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday, five to eight? Friday. So that maybe as a temporary solution, the police department has the authority to uh, limit parking to those times until we can come together on a more permanent solution. That's something that you would entertain, Chief Bone? Um, honestly, that would be a little bit difficult to, to enforce because we would do a temporary thing with the sandwich boards. Mm -hmm. And so um, we would be putting sandwich boards out all, all week let's say, and then bringing them back in for Friday and Saturday night. I, I was thinking more of the temporary solution in the sense that should we have a snowstorm and this hadn't been resolved or something, we could put them out there. Uh, even though maybe we hadn't activated a town-wide parking ban, we could at least post that area for the storm time. Um, so I, I was looking at the temporary solution more as, a, as an event type of event solution. Mm -hmm. yeah, That's I what think. I would do at this point I, until it's and I, I think Councillor Piazza is correct, and Angela, I'm sure you must work with that group. Um, I, I would put it back, I'd, I'd bump it right out of ordinance and put it into transportation and let them, they're the ones with the experience with this stuff. Um, even though technically it falls under us because we create it, um, and then let them come back to you at ordinance and, you know what I mean? I just think we're. I think I don't think we have enough information. I think we're out of our. I think we're out of our league at this juncture. That's just my opinion. I'm happy to. I I can be very easily swayed if you both are comfortable with something. Um, yeah. I mean, I I. I feel like that that would be appropriate. Could be an appropriate solution, but we also have some pretty clear recommendation from that um, that we have an issue with. Um, tight line speed, uh, tight shoulders, um, neighbor, neighbors um, being impacted. That, um, and we also have the recommendation from the owner that, that if we had a, a seasonal thing, and so I, again, I go back to my suggestion of if we were to put something in motion now, it would be well after Thanksgiving before it would, would go into effect if we had some kind of you know, short duration while we kicked it back to, to transportation, we could um, address all those issues and not have a permanent impact on the business. What do you want to put into play? I, I would say that the, I don't know, four, five months of no parking along uh, that section of Gorm Road. Through the winter? Yes, yeah. exactly. Monday through Monday? No, no all, all seven days. All seven days. So what we have uh, uh, prepared by Sergeant O'Malley was a no parking ban year round <coughs> for a certain stretch of Gorm Road. What you're proposing is to amend that proposal that was part of our package 
to make it from when to when? Let's pick two. So I would say expiring in um, April. April 1st. Sure. Yeah. December 1st, April 1st? Whenever, whenever we go through council, I think at this point it wouldn't be till mid-December, but. Right, but yeah. so since it may end up being permanent, we would say December 1st to April 1st. Oh, I would suggest not making it permanent at this point. Right. 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 Just just having something yeah. that is temporary right. and it has, okay. has a date certain in 20, April so of 2018. Uh, it, it lasts uh, uh, until April 1st. And then, and then okay. transportation can weigh in. Uh, we, can get, we can come up with a more permanent solution. Right. I mean, I'm just, I'm what, just, what happens I'm is when, that, when matters get passed from us to the town council, they get amended all the way through the process as we try and work right. out a solution that's equitable to everybody. Right. So uh, by moving it forward now, what you're essentially doing is attempting to be able to put something in place before the snow flies. That's essentially what we're doing. Right. Uh, it doesn't preclude any of the effort to have discussions amongst the Transportation Committee or the Planning Department right. or the Police Department. Right. Uh, with, with the business owner. Uh, yeah. With the business owner. So, uh, that's your motion? Yes. Okay. Second. How do you feel about that? Uh, I, I don't. Um, and let me just let me explain why. Um, even though you're both saying that it would be temporary, if something were to happen, it's very restrictive in my opinion. And if we're to get to that point, heaven forbid something happens, we get to April 1 and boom, they're, they're done. They're, they're parking, in, you know what I mean? So, or I'm sorry, next, now until April 1. Um, they have no parking from December. So we no have, a, short, we have a very short window of time from now until December 1 to get something in place from three different committees compiled before we're going to take away all their parking from December 1 until April 1. And you know how these committees work. I mean, it can be slow, it can be slow moving if they don't have the right pieces. So that's my only concern. While I agree with you um, and understand and appreciate the um, fact that it's just a temporary thing, it makes me nervous putting a temporary thing that's so restrictive in the books and on the record that potentially could happen if we don't get all the pieces or the people to the table that need to be to the table. Correct, and I'm taking the, the recommendation of the police department pretty, I, pretty strongly. Yeah, no, yeah. I agree, I, and I, I yeah. and I usually do too. I've never, I don't think I've ever gone against anything that they've recommended. And if we come up with a solution, it'll take us a month or more to, to put, uh, put it through if it is approved. And so we have a month to work out other optional solutions. But I'm going to yeah, I mean, it's, say it's that the too, police so. department's recommendation uh, is probably, with winter coming on, I, I would support it. Yeah, and I would say as, as the snow flies and as there's snow banks there, the parking becomes, you know, the roads yeah, creep in and it's really hard to have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm really concerned that now cars are going to be parked in the roadway. People are going to be walking in the roadway to get by the cars. Yeah. The roads are going to be slippery. So the amendment, just to focus on it, is to restrict parking from the date of enactment to April 1st. And if it were to remain in effect for the full 2018 calendar year, it would be December 1st to April 1st of 2019? I wouldn't even put it in there to, to say that. So I, I would say it has to come back. Come back so it, it so expires. expires right? At the April end, on April 1st, it expires. So it's a ban that would expire on April 1st. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? No, I mean, you know how I feel. Okay, all in favor? Opposed. Thank you, everyone. We'll see if we can work out something. Oh.
That's going to be nice clear. to have a clear house. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the next item on the agenda, item five, is huh? a discussion on horse oh. beach permits. Uh, uh, At what time? Yeah. And uh, we'll we'll need to make this short uh, because there's a six o'clock meeting and they need a few minutes to set up. Uh, the I think the. Um, uh, the, disc the information that we were getting from uh, Cindy Flaherty, who runs an equestrian mm -hmm. program here in town, is that they would uh, recommend as a way in which to have a, a pilot program of sorts, because our uh, enactment date is likely to be, or uh, effective date, is October 1st, 2018. Correct. Uh, that for this year, uh, uh, the town uh, would provide barrels on the beach, on dry sand, periodically located so as not to force a rider to dismount and walk too far. Uh, they would have uh, the little step stool that would allow them to remount mm -hmm. at that point, and they would dispose of uh, the horse manure in the barrels. Right. Uh, the input that we received from both the uh, Department of Public Works and from Community Services, Todd Souza, who's still here with us, was that uh, that represented problems if the town were responsible for emptying the barrels. Oh, uh, 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 one, it's unfunded. Uh, two, there's weight issues, uh, there's uh, weather condition issues, access to the beach and whatnot. Uh, Tom Hall suggested that the responsibility be assumed because this is a temporary pilot program effort of uh, attempted collaboration between the horse riding community uh, and the town, mm -hmm. that the horse riding community work together to uh, uh, take responsibility for emptying the barrels. That that may involve uh, uh, getting a all-terrain vehicle on the beach mm -hmm. periodically, and that, that we would assist in making that, allow, be, allowing that to happen. Okay. Uh, and that seems to be, at least at this point, a concrete proposal does not require action on our part, right. uh, but which would allow uh, DPW uh, and the town manager and the community services director to work together to allow that to happen okay. and work with. So that, that seems to be the best case of seeing whether we can manage to get a horse manure removed in a very timely manner. The other suggestion is a having a uh, uh, a vehicle follow the horses that they have a more coordinated riding program where many of these riders ride at the same time so that they could make that arrangement. I think that's also viable. It also doesn't require our uh, taking responsibility for it. It would be something that the town manager would work out with the riding community. And so, uh, and that's something I think has been uh, proposed by uh, Susan Hamill, mm -hmm. who said that trying to work with the riding community was uh, a, uh, a good goal. And uh, I'll forward that, if you haven't seen that email, that was forwarded to me today. Okay. So, uh, thoughts on that? We've got two, min two three minutes. Go ahead. Uh, who, who's providing the, uh, the mounting blocks of the barrels? Uh, the riding community, uh, uh, Cindy Flaherty said that it was her intention to try and work with uh, some of the Boy Scout groups in town to do projects that would build them. Hmm. And then, um, other concern that I have is just that, you know, the weather's worse in the winter more storms because I, I know we have barrels in the summertime um, but I, I guess I don't, I don't know I'm not a meteorologist but <laughs> one they'd have to be covered yeah uh, uh, they would the, the Commodore uh, the horse manure would probably freeze so yeah. there, there's uh, and we would have to have the town manager 
uh, or whoever he delegates responsibility for this, uh, have a program of getting out there and cleaning it up, uh, uh, picking it up and carrying it away. So it would be a carry in, carry out program. Uh, and we're not quite sure what the problems would be, access, uh, but it's worth giving them the latitude to try it uh, yeah. to see if it works. I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to, let, to give them the opportunity to try it. My, sadly, I don't, I don't, if they're not picking it up now, it was one thing when I thought we were going to provide the barrels and the cleanup and that type of stuff, but if we're going to be relying on them and they're already not cleaning it up, I just feel like this is going to be the same thing. But I think we have to give it that year to see what happens and try it. I think part of the problem was they didn't realize they had to clean it up in the intertidal zone because they were, they were thinking it was okay yeah. because the, the tide was going to come in and take it out. Um, I guess the other thing would just be a, are they carrying rakes and shovels? I mean, it's, 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 I'm happy to let them try it. Yeah. Um, but, I, but they would have to have some paraphernalia to pick it up because they're not going to scoop it up with their hands. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, God. No. Uh, and uh, I know it is an issue, uh, uh, certainly in the town clerk's office, that riders wear the permit number on their, uh, on their backs because right. they're not doing that. They're not doing that. And so, again, what we're looking for is cooperation and mm -hmm. compliance. Yep. Clean, clean it up, wear the numerals, and we as a town will make an effort to uh, cooperate to allow some things to happen. Yep. Yep. And I would, I, I, would, I would firmly suggest that we relay to um, the chief that if they're coming upon riders that are not displaying their permits, like has been happening a lot, you start finding one or two people and you'll start seeing people comply really quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think we just really need to start coming down on some people. Like we did with the dogs. If we're going to hold people to that standard, we have to hold everybody to that standard. There, nobody is above. That's so true. we've got to, you know, we've got to be really careful with this type of stuff. So, but I'm, I, I'm game to let them try. Good. Uh, I think we're uh, we're done. Okay. Uh, I'll convey this to uh, the town manager, uh, and I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. Conclude the All in favor? Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Todd, thanks for sticking around so that you heard where we're going to go with this. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, sure. In the, the um, meeting packet, 